This is part two of my Tandy upgrade video. In part one, I upgrade the RAM and CPU, so watch that if interested. In part two, I'm going to show you how to upgrade both the internal and external floppy drives from stock 5.25 inch 360K to 3.5 inch 720K drives. The reason you want to go to a 720K drive on the Tandy is really, once you upgrade the memory, you have a really limited problem with games. You can run a lot more games on this thing once you have more RAM, but the problem is most of them are bigger than a 360k floppy. And since there's no hard drive capability in this computer, going to a 3.5 inch 720k floppy will really increase your ability to run games. And of course, if you do it in the internal drive and the external drive, you'll be even better because you can have a nice boot disk full of DOS and stuff, and then you can have the games on the second disk. Okay, first we're going to look at one of these external drives. We're going to see what it takes to upgrade them to 720k. So above here I have one of the cases removed of one of my external drives because I have two. And I've taken off the drive, there's a shield, there's the floppy drive that goes in here. And normally the floppy drive just slots right into this. So five and a quarter inch drives, the edge have an edge connector, and the power is here. And this all comes over this thick cable that comes from the Tandy. But when I took the drive apart, I noticed that there were holes on this board here for a pin header. So what you do is you take some pin headers like this, which I have in my toolkit, broke it in half, and you essentially take this board out and you just solder it onto that. Obviously this board is sort of universal and made to either run a five and a quarter inch drive on this or a three and a half inch through these pin headers. Then all you have to do is basically use something like this, which is a you know an adapter for a floppy drive, and you can actually connect it straight up. So here's an old floppy drive I have in here. You obviously will need one of these power adapters, so that goes into here. And you can just use a normal floppy cable. Now normally, the way this is wired up, the 5 and a quarter inch drive connects right into the slot connector. That means it's a straight through. So if you look at a regular floppy cable, it has a twist here. And this is normally for the A drive. But because this, is, this board here is wired up for a straight through, you use the straight through part of the floppy cable and then you just connect it up. You can absolutely put one of these floppy drives into these mounting brackets and put it into here and close the case all up and it looks perfect. Okay, with the five and a quarter inch floppy drive removed, it's now time to install this drive in here. Now, this is a 1.44 meg floppy drive, but the BIOS on this computer and the disk controller just don't support that. But luckily, 720K and 1.44 have the same exact number of tracks. The only difference is the read rate is different. When the controller writes at a slow data rate to a high density drive, it automatically knows that it's going to be a double density disk and it can sense it because of the, you know, you're covered the little hole there. So you can absolutely put a 1.44 meg drive in place of a 720K and it will work as a 720K drive. This is not the case with five and a quarter inch drives. 360K drives like this and 1.2 meg drives have a different number of tracks and the data rate is different, so they are not interchangeable. So to replace the internal floppy drive in the Tandy with a three and a half inch, we're gonna to have to make a custom cable. First, let me explain why that is. This here is the original cable that came with the Tandy. As you can see, it does not have a twist on it. This here is a standard PC floppy drive cable. Now, if you know your PCs, the A drive is always connected to the end of the cable here, but as you can see, there's actually a twist in here. And this is what allows you to hook up two drives to the same cable and have one be A and one be B. But this is actually a problem on the Tandy. Even though the original drive has a straight through cable here, and one might think we could just use this part of the cable here, which is obviously straight through to connect the three and a half inch floppy, it actually doesn't work. And here's the reason why. Here's the original five and a quarter inch floppy drive that was in the Tandy. In order to get this drive to work in the Tandy, this jumper here needs to be set to DS0, which stands for Drive Select 0. A typical PC always requires the floppy drive to be configured for DS1 to work. That's whether you have it on the end or the middle of the floppy cable. It's always set to DS1. So that's where we run into our first problem. It seems that all the three and a half inch floppy drives I have have no way to set them to DS0. They just don't have any jumpers on them at all, which means that they're hard-coded at the DS1 configuration, which is what a standard PC needs. Now, some people say that whether you're at DS1 or DS0, it doesn't matter because what this twist in the cable does is actually allow you to use a drive on either setting. 
but that's actually not correct. So what I had found was happening is if I put this drive in the computer and it was obviously configured for DS1 and I used this floppy cable on either the twist or the straight through connector, neither actually worked. What would happen is when the floppy drive tried to access, the motor would turn on, but it would actually not do anything at all. Doing some research about the whole DS0 or DS1 thing, it seems that all PC floppy drives are configured for DS1, which is basically the B drive. And that's why when you have a straight through cable like this and you connect a DS1 drive to this cable, it shows up as the B drive. But to get it to work as the A drive, you have to connect it after the twist. The thing is, this is actually a non-standard way of selecting which drive you're accessing. It's actually kind of a proprietary PC standard and doesn't follow the actual interface standard that these drives are all based on. Now the reason why the drive is not working properly on the Tandy is because the Tandy is actually seems to be using the Sugart standard interface connector. And that's actually what all PC floppy drives are based on. Originally you had the capability of using four floppy drives on a single interface cable and that's DS0, 1, 2, and 3. In the original standard, drives weren't assigned based on where they were on the cable or if there was a twist in the cable. The entire cable was a straight through and you had to set the jumper on each drive depending on what you wanted to be seen to by the system. So what the PC standard did is it used two of the pins that are normally used for DS0 and DS2 and it assigned them to other functions. Now as you can see here for the original, when you had drive select 1, 2, and 3, and 0, there was only a single motor on signal. And what that would do is when the floppy drive was being accessed, all drive motor would run at the same time, but only one of them would actually respond to commands. And that was what's determined by the DS0 through 3 signal. But on the PC interface, they actually took the DS0 signal and they took the DS2 signal, so that's pin 10 and pin 14, and they actually created a second motor select signal and then the drive select signal. And when you swap them around, if you go on the straight through cable, DS1, which is the B drive, and the motor on signal is just going straight through the drive, and you know the drive is set for DS1, but when you swap them over, this motor A and this drive A signal goes and is connected physically to pin 12 and pin 16 and that allows the drive to become the A drive without changing the jumper. That's just not going to work on the Tandy. Luckily there's an easy fix and it involves just modifying a standard PC floppy cable. Let me show you what I did. So for the Tandy, to get a DS1 floppy, which is how these three and a half inches are configured, working on the internal slot, I needed to respond to the DS0 signal wire. So that means we have to just swap pins 10 and pins 12. The reason why we can't use a standard PC cable is as you can see here, pins 10 and pins 12 aren't swapped individually. They are actually swapped with these other two pins. Well clearly that's not going to work because what that does is swaps around the motor select pin with a pin that doesn't do anything and the floppy drive just won't respond to anything. Okay, so back to the cable. We just need to switch these two pins around 10 and 12. What I did is I took a regular PC cable that even had a twist originally and I just popped apart this connector here. You just sort of stick a screwdriver in and this cover comes off and you pull the wires off. And then what you can do is I peeled them apart and I untwisted these four wires here and all we're left with is these cables that are twisted. So what this is is pin 10, 11, and 12 with 11 being the ground signal and I just swapped it around and as you can see there's the twist and these other pins which are essentially 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18 I just left go straight through and that means that the motor select signal that originally is straight through is actually still getting through to the drive and all that's being changed around is pin 10 and 11. So this is going to go like that but it's not going to go on because of this this extra pin right here. So I'm just going to use these um, cutters here and I'm just going to cut that pin off. It's not necessary, it's just used as a ground pin. So this is the, definitely the way it's going to go on. Just make sure I cut the right pin. It's the third pin down. So it's the third pin down here. Okay, now that that pin has been cut off, this cable should go right on. And there it is. Perfect. So now the only thing I have to do is I'm going to have to do some kind of trickery with the folding here like this to get this cable to wrap around. But there's no big deal. There should be room. 
All right, I have the Tandy roughly assembled, so I'm using my modified cable, which just swaps pin 10 and 11. And of course, I have a power adapter here on the floppy drive to allow it to get power. And I have a boot disk in here, and let's see what happens. So the drive is seeking normally, and that's a good sign you know it's working right away. Bingo. DOS 6.22, working perfectly off this disk drive. I don't have the external drive connected here but absolutely it works. This computer's BIOS supports dual 720K drives right out of the box, so you'll have no problem with this mod. You just have to fix the cable. Okay, so here's how it looks with the floppy drive mounted. I'd say a white color one probably would have been better, but honestly, you never see this side of the computer. This doesn't really matter. And uh, floppy drive goes in. No problem like that. So yeah. Three and a half inch floppy drive into a Tandy 1000EX. Well, that's it for my Tandy upgrade video series. I'm stoked to have found this broken Tandy, revived it, and now fully upgraded it as much as easily possible. It's perfect for my 80s PC gaming needs. I hope you found this video helpful and interesting. I'd appreciate a thumbs up if you did, and please put your comments and questions in the comment section below and subscribe for more videos. Thanks for watching. Bye.